Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime with Kate. My name is Kate and I am going to talk about critical theories in early childhood education and care. Critical theories are a bunch of new theories that are quite unique and transformative. They do include key theories Jürgen Habermas, who was German, and Paolo Freire. There are other theorists, of course, who are working within this paradigm. Let's delve into it. Critical theories use some key ideas. One of the key ideas of critical theory is the notion of hidden curriculum. That means that everything we teach has meaning and sometimes the way that curriculum is structured may impact how children learn. So we need to challenge taking for granted practices because sometimes they are there because of the taking for granted practices and folk pedagogies because it's always been this way. So challenging the status quo is one of the key ideas of critical theories. Idea number two is cultural reproduction. Critical theories talk about importance of society or cultures reproducing themselves through discourses. So these discourses or the way things are done or the way we think about things uh, are reproduced through school education, early childhood education. For example, when I just started working in early childhood education and care, all uh, rooms would have primary colors. It was considered that children enjoy looking at yellow, blue and red and it should have a lot of things on the wall and the environment to be honest was a little bit overwhelming. We also had a lot of plastic toys and it was okay to use paper plates and other crafts and create so-called product art. These ideas link closely to the ideas of Paolo Freire, who was saying that education quite often is not neutral. That means that because all these cultural practices are reproduced through the education, guess what happens? Yes, we have people or children who are oppressed because they're getting educated the same way and the way that is useful for certain types of people or certain categories of society, these children often do not have any voice. And same with people who are poor, according to Paolo Freire. So education, as he said, was liberation. So if you want to um, emancipate people, including children who usually do not have rights, you need to make sure that your education is based on democratic principles, which means that as a teacher, you need to consider, are you listening to children? How do you invite them in discussions? Uh, is your education neutral? What impacts your educational practices? So questioning, as you can imagine, would be a very, very important way of using critical theories. According to Paolo Freire, educator, educators are, or teachers are agents of change. And I really like it as a teacher because I think it makes you powerful. It empowers you to change the program and make it more interesting, engaging, but also based on children's rights. It also creates this notion of children as competent and capable. Uh, according to Jürgen Habermas, which is another critical theorist, if you remember, the world also is not a given. So reflective practice or reflection, critical reflection in our case, helps us to challenge these taking for granted practices. Consider what are you doing right now in your classroom? For example, you might display birthday charts or you might talk about calendar and what day it is today or the weather. Asking why you are doing it and digging a little bit deeper in terms of do children like this practice? Do they learn anything? What does research tell you about this practice? Also, are children telling you or not telling you whether they like this practice or not? Is their body language telling you they're not very interested? So asking these questions can help you as a teacher uh, to reflect on your current practices, challenge the status quo and change the practices, transforming them. So to summarize, 
Critical theories are amazing modern theories and they offer a range of instruments for us as teachers. Number one, we have to disrupt the current status quo. Number two, we have to challenge taking for granted practices. Number three, we have to question everything we do and reflect using reflective journals or just discussions with other practitioners. We also can discuss things with children and ask for their opinion. We need to invite them in decision making. And finally, we need to reflect on our practice.